Incineration. Oh, aye, I'll melt the flesh off your bones in the blink of an eye. <laughs> You're right, laddie. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Very bit fine. Think furnace with wings. Yeah, I, I, I need air. Flash of light, searing pain, then poof! You're nothing more than a pile of ash. <laughs> Nope. What question you fed up being asked to make sure that I don't ask it? Oh, uh, how do you uh, play a dwarf? And that's <laughs> what people ask. And I mean, the thing is, I don't know, you just sort of learn the lines and say them. I mean, you, don't, you never thought, I mean, because I think dwarves don't kind of consider themselves uh, to be unusual. I mean, they're just themselves. So, I mean, it's like you approach the part in the same way that you approach any other part. You learn the lines and you walk on to these sets that are incredible and, uh, and you just say the words and then you go home at the end of the day. So, no method acting by going around on your knees for th six months beforehand? No, that's, that's in the years to come. That's when I played uh, Dopey and Panto at uh, Scunthorpe. <laughs> <laughs> is there any more chance that you'll be called back for more research? Yeah, we're going back in May. I mean, it's, we're going back in May for another uh, three months. Three months at the minute, but you know, three months at the minute in Peter Jackson's mind, that could be another three years. <laughs> um, but no, I can't wait to go back. I cannot wait to go back. It's a, a country that is very much, uh, you know, I mean, New Zealand is amazing. And, 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 and it makes perfect sense to me that, that Peter Jackson's Middle Earth is in New Zealand because the two are hard to um, uh, separate. And uh, one of the big talking points with me and my mates when we went to see it for the first time was that hat was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> was it? What was? Did it have steel bars in it to keep it gravity defying? No, I mean it did. <laughs> and, and what a fantastic constructed sentence! Uh, no, it didn't have steel bars. It had. It was actually very. The only the only comfortable thing about my entire uh, costume and prosthetic was the hat. Um, and the hat. And it's funny. There are people all over the world that have been um, making hats like that. And I get <laughs> sent them in the post. I get sent mm. etchings of, of hats. Um, but no, I loved it. And, you know, and I loved the, the symmetry of, of the, the hat, mm. with the moustache, with the hair. I mean, I am I'm very proud and, uh, uh, and, and happy with Bofer's look. So the hat, um, I mean, it was, I mean, I'll tell you what was the pain. The pain was the scarf. And people don't talk about Bofer's scarf. Bofer's scarf was a nightmare because that had to look the same every day. And... <laughs> We spent hours on the scarf. It's always the little things that we don't realise, isn't it? Exactly. Well, you know, the dwarves. <laughs> and um, at the end of, um, I don't know if at the end or during the Lord of the Rings trilogy being filmed, everybody got a tattoo. Uh, was there any suggestions that everybody in the dwarf? Well, fellowship... there were suggestions. I, as a Northern Ireland <laughs> Presbyterian, said There's not, that's definitely not going to happen. But <laughs> if we are, uh, uh, Graham McTavish, who plays Dwalin, uh, and Dwalin, who's one of the fiercest of, of the dwarves. Uh, but he's actually a softie. I mean, he cries more than Charles Ingalls in Little House in the Prairie. But um, he suggested that we all got uh, a ring. So we all had a, mm. a, a ring made, and uh, uh, which is which is, is engraved kind of in dwarvish and also has little images of of, of the journey. Oh. I of course lost mine until <laughs> my uh, daughter uh, discovered it in her bedroom the other day. Thank God. <laughs> Oh, so it's found again. It has. It is found. <laughs> and who out of the dwarf actors is m uh, most like their characters? Do you think? Stephen Hunter, who plays Bomber, <laughs> uh, is not a stranger to a pie. Um, uh, I think. I think. It, you know, towards the end, we all began to kind of merge into one. And fact, well, interestingly enough. Because we spent so much time in our uh, costumes and our prosthetics. At the end of the day, or at the weekend, when we'd go out and see each other, you know, to socialise or have a meal, you know, after a very long week's work, when you saw each uh, other out of costume, it was ha almost hard to recognise. I mean, we, we were more <laughs> surprised by how we looked in real life than as we did as mm. characters. Fair enough. And um, one last question, so I've been given the, the, been given times the up there. Yeah. Eye. <laughs> uh, just brief, uh, quickly, going back a couple of years, um, when... Stephen Moffat took over as the story on Doctor Who. Your name was everywhere. Everyone was convinced oh, you were going to be the yeah, new yeah. Doctor. Was that just people putting two and two together, or was there ever any consideration? Well, I think you know, Stephen and I worked together with Jekyll. That's why people. Uh, thought I it, think yeah. people talked about. It. I had never. I never. I, I mean, it was one of those stories that I, I began to believe, even though there was no truth in it. <laughs> <laughs> but I would never. Have, I mean, I, you know, I would never take on something like Doctor Who because Chris Eccleston was so good, and I went to drama school with Chris. I could never afford it. And also, I wasn't that interested in Doctor Who, but Stephen Moffat I'm interested in. I mean, he's, his writing for Jekyll mm. was astonishing. His writing yeah. for Sherlock 
I mean, the, 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 problem, the only problem with the Sherlock is the two leading actors are, are weak, in my opinion, but uh, the writing is very strong. Yeah.